It was the year 1991. Minerva McGonagall was in her office at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, preparing to send out hundreds of letters to potential Hogwarts students. She felt a great sense of pride and accomplishment as she put the final touches on the letters. She knew that Hogwarts would soon welcome a new generation of students, and she was glad to be part of their journey. With a smile, she put the letters into the Hogwarts mail and sent them off. She watched the letters fly out the window and disappear into the night sky. She had done her part, and now it was up to the Hogwarts students to make their way to the castle. She knew this new generation of students would be the start of something special. There was one problem that Minerva had to deal with, what to do about a muggle girl named Agnes Parker. Agnes was orphaned when she was a small child and had a muggle family. She had spent the last ten years of her life living with Vernon and Petunia Dursley, both of whom were muggles. Agnes was now aware of her magical abilities, and it seemed impossible to keep her muggle life and magical life separate. Minerva was determined to find a solution to this problem. Should Agnes attend Hogwarts, because she was an orphan? Was she a muggle-born witch, as several of Dumbledore's spies had suspected? Either way, Agnes would need a safe haven where she could use her magical powers without being ostracized. Minerva decided to take her to Hogwarts and enroll her in the school to learn how to use her magic and discover her true identity. The question of Agnes attending Hogwarts was answered by Willa Tyrell. Willa had been a permanent resident of Hogwarts for the last seven years of her life. After her family disowned her, Willa began attending Hogwarts, she was placed in Hufflepuff. Not to be outdone by her best friend, Amber Dumbledore also started classes at Hogwarts, when she was eight years old, she was placed in Gryfinder. Now both girls have recently graduated, having completed their time at Hogwarts. Albus Dumbledore showed up as the last acceptance letter to Hogwarts was mailed. He said, it will be quite an interesting term without the girls in school. Maybe they could use a break from the school, said McGonagall. After all, they are 16 and 14 years old. Amber wants to tour the Ministry of Magic, while Willa wants to see the Wizarding Colleges. McGonagall thought for a moment. We'll allow it, she finally said. But they must be back in time for the start of this term. And they must keep their wands with them at all times. Dumbledore frowned and said, What really concerns me is young Alexander Ulrich. I wonder if it would be right to admit him to Hogwarts because his mother once attended our school. Perhaps Alexander could be magic, as Irene was, said McGonagall. Magic or not, we're bringing him to Hogwarts. His father may have been a werewolf, but he may have magical powers, and I believe it is our duty to help him discover them. We cannot ignore a child with such potential, just as we once ignored his mother. We must give Alexander the same chance as we gave to Irene. He deserves that and more. And what if I say no, said Dumbledore. After all, Irene dropped out of Hogwarts to attend Gareth Hall Academy in Canada, and she broke her ties with the other students. I did not approve of that. Then I would like to remind you that you caused the deaths of Paul and Isabella Ulrich, said his wife. I would also say your stupidity caused their daughter Irene to leave the wizarding world. You owe it to Alexander to bring him to Hogwarts, maybe not as a student, but as a child who needs a proper home. Unless you want the entire wizarding and muggle world to know that you practically wiped out the Ulrich family, I insist you bring Alexander to Hogwarts. For once, Albus Dumbledore didn't say anything. Not while most of the Trickenberg family was either still hiding or dead. He was sure that Shannon and Joanna weren't dead not when he led an investigation to their graves and discovered that the women had covered up their own deaths with the bodies of two dead squirrels disguised as them. He was relieved when he found out Shannon and Joanna were alive, but he was also dismayed that they had resorted to such measures. Dumbledore swore to go after the Trickenberg family for deceiving him. 
Yet he had no idea that the Trickenberg family had been planning to go after him for many years. He had underestimated them, as they had the power to manipulate the magical world. The Trickenberg family had been manipulating events in the background for many years, and now Dumbledore had to pay for his evil deeds. Meanwhile, at the Dursley residence, Harry Potter quickly adapted to the Dursley family routine. But with some small changes. As in, Harry refused to put up with their mistreatment. He also found ways to make life better for Agnes and Nicholas, like showing them kindness and helping them with chores around the house. He also found ways to make life more bearable for himself, such as finding solace in music, books, and other activities. As for the Dursleys, Vernon, Petunia, and Dudley realized that Harry was nothing like Patrick Harvey. Meaning, they couldn't mistreat him, because Harry stood up to them and treat him as a member of the family. The Dursleys were forced to give Harry a proper home instead of locking him in the cupboard. They were not happy about having to treat Harry like a member of their family. Also, Dudley was grounded for the zoo fiasco and could no longer play his video games. Petunia faced scrutiny from the neighbors when Mrs. Lawrence, who lived across the street from the Dursleys, and her teenage daughter Antonia was Patrick's babysitter, remarked upon seeing Harry sitting outside one evening. Petunia was embarrassed and quickly took Harry inside. She was determined to keep him hidden away from prying eyes and out of sight from the rest of the neighborhood. As for Vernon, he found himself clashing with Harry. Harry was bolder and stronger than Patrick, and Vernon couldn't stand it. Vernon tried to put Harry in his place, but Harry refused to back down. This only made Vernon more angry and determined to get rid of Harry. Harry, Agnes, and Nicholas soon learned from Jonathan and Adrian that their plan to switch Harry and Patrick worked. Patrick was currently staying with Harry's Uncle Lee and Aunt Mary Evans and recovering from the damage that Vernon and Petunia had done to him. Agnes and Nicholas were pleased with the outcome and thanked Jonathan and Adrian for their help. They were relieved to know that Patrick was now safe and could heal in a supportive environment. But the happy times could not last, as three letters arrived at the Dursley residence. The letters read, Dear student, we are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted into Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The school is located in the heart of Scotland, near the village of Hogmead and sits at the edge of the Forbidden Forest. Enclosed is a list of supplies that you will need for your year-long stay at Hogwarts. Three black robes for everyday wear. A hat, preferably black, for everyday wear. Equipment, one wand, one cauldron, one set of brass scales, one set of crystal file, one telescope. First years are not allowed to bring broomsticks to school. Textbooks. The Standard Book of Spells, Grade 1, by Miranda Goshawk. A History of Magic by Bathilda Bagshot. Magical Theory by Adelbert Waffling. A Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration by Americ Switch. 1000 Magical Herbs and Fungi by Felida Spohr. Magical Drafts and Potions by Arsenius Jigger. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. The Dark Forces, A Guide to Self-Protection by Quentin Trimble. Students are allowed to bring a cat, the toad, or an owl. We surely hope that you will consider attending our school. Term begins on September 1st. We await your owl by no later than July 31st. Upon receiving his Hogwarts letter, Harry read it three times. He wasn't exactly happy about receiving the letter, as he was getting ready to attend the sixth form classes at his school. Plus, he assumed that going to Hogwarts contradicted everything he knew about physics. Harry put the letter aside and left the cupboard under the stairs, intending to go about his day. Of course, Dudley saw him in the kitchen cooking and grew upset, saying, Where is my Hogwarts letter? I want my Hogwarts letter. Oh, please, Dudley, Agnes snapped at him when he began whining. You always get jealous whenever Patrick, 
or I get something and you don't. Dudley pouted, crossing his arms and glaring at Agnes. It's not fair. He stomped off to his room, slamming the door behind him. Agnes sighed and shook her head, feeling a little guilty for keeping the letter from Dudley. What did you do with the letter? Harry said to Agnes. Use your imagination, Agnes clapped back. Unknown to Harry, Agnes had taken Dudley's Hogwarts letter and hid it in the bureau, hoping that no one would find it. Very soon, Vernon and Petunia were heard speaking in Vernon's office. Vernon found the letter on a desk in his office. He read it and said, Are you sure about this, pet? Do you want Dudley to attend Hogwarts? I don't know, said Petunia. I dropped out of Hogwarts in my fifth year and switched to Southview Secondary School, as Irene Ulrich went to Gareth Hall Academy. I also received a letter from Smeltings, my old high school, said Vernon, and they want Dudley to attend there. But I know that you might not want that for Dudley. Petunia said, well, my parents didn't want me to go to Hogwarts in the first place, as they wanted me to go to Stonewall Middle School. But what if we gave Dudley a choice about where he wants to go? Outside the office, Harry, Dudley, and Agnes were standing by the door. Nicholas and Jonathan had joined them, with Jonathan claiming that he had also gotten his Hogwarts letter. Dudley said to Agnes, why did you hide the letter? Do you not know a joke when it happens, said Jonathan. But still, that was mean, said Dudley. What if I want to go to the magic school? Haven't we seen enough of you already? Agnes cried out. You're everywhere we are, and to be honest, it's getting annoying. Don't you want to hang out with normal kids, I mean kids who aren't, magic? But they are boring, said Dudley. Why would I want to hang out with kids who are boring? I rather hang out with you guys. Maybe your parents want you to hang out with normal people, Harry began, but was interrupted by the door opening. Vernon and Petunia came out of the office. We found this in the bureau, Vernon said as he handed Dudley the letter, and I think it's best if we let Dudley decide if he wants to go to the magic school or to smeltings. I want to go to the magic school, Dudley said, much to Harry's, Agnes, and Jonathan's chagrin. Agnes was the first to respond. That's not a good idea, Dudley. You don't even know what you're getting into. Jonathan nodded in agreement. Harry said nothing, but his silence spoke volumes. Nicholas said, Dudley, I know you think you want to go to Hogwarts, but you must know that magic is not a toy. It is a tool used by wizards, and it's not something to be taken lightly. It requires a lot of dedication and hard work to truly understand and master it. Don't be such a naysayer, dude, said Dudley. I still want to go to the magic school. Besides, all my friends think that magic is cool. Nicholas sighed. He knew that Dudley wasn't taking him seriously. Okay, Dudley, if you still want to go to Hogwarts, I will help you prepare. But I want you to promise me you will take this seriously. Are you kidding? Agnes hissed. You seriously want Dudley to go to Hogwarts? Do you want us to be a laughingstock? No, Agnes. I would rather Dudley learn what responsibility really is, said Nicholas. And if that means taking him to Hogwarts, so be it. Then it's settled, said Vernon. Now to other business, this doesn't concern you children. Harry frowned, wondering why Vernon and Petunia didn't suspect that he wasn't Patrick Harvey. He was worried they would discover his true identity, but relieved that they hadn't. He knew it was only a matter of time before they would find out. After all, he had been gone for eleven years and he had changed a lot since then. He was determined to keep his identity a secret for as long as he could. Nice going, Dudley, Agnes hissed as the boys glared at him. Now we have to deal with you at Hogwarts. Dudley felt embarrassed. He had hoped to avoid this situation, but he had been too impulsive. 
he realized he would have to be extra careful from now on. But I want to go to Hogwarts with you guys, he said. Besides, what's so bad about me knowing about magic? Harry frowned, not knowing that having Dudley be at Hogwarts would soon be the least of his problems. As for Willa, she was now the last living child of Marcus and Amir Tyrell. All but one of her brothers died mysteriously in 1990 and Amir was also dead. Marcus was still alive and missed his only daughter. He was upset to hear Oz had disowned her rather than accept her decision to go to Hogwarts. Yet, he also wondered why Oz disowned Willa, as Amir had died two years before Willa was born. Marcus could not understand why Oz had disowned Willa and was determined to unravel the mystery. Willa also wanted to contact Marcus for many years. However, she could not speak to him due to Dumbledore's manipulations. At the same time, Marcus wanted to find out who Willa really was and how and why she ended up with his family. But Willa was too afraid to tell him the truth. She knew Dumbledore was watching and she was scared of how Marcus would react. She kept her secrets and stayed silent. So, Willa waited until summer 1991 to send the first of many letters to her father. Little did she know that when Marcus answered back, several family secrets would be exposed. 